Hi together and welcome to today's webinar as usually hosted by the Open Telecom Cloud Community Portal. Today I have here Victor and Chan from the IITS Consulting uh, together with me and we will have today a very interesting topic. It's the Open Telecom Cloud Terraform Project Factory. With this I would lead over directly to Victor. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah. So shortly to today's speaker, my name is Victor Getz. I'm the CTO and founder at ETS Consulting. Um, I have a lot of experience with OTC, three years already. We have dozens of clients. I made architectures already and um, guided them to the OTC and made very successful projects on the OTC. And today I brought with me my right hand guy regarding Terraform and he's uh, really, really good at Terraform, also certified. So, Jan, you can introduce yourself. So, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Jan, and I've been working with Victor almost two and a half years now. And I primarily um, have been focusing on uh, Terraform-based automation on infrastructures. And yeah, today we will we would like to talk a bit about the project factory that we commonly use in our own projects as well to make things much easier and simpler. Then something about our company. Uh, I founded the company in 2019 and the main goal of our company is development teams to provide development teams. We are split it in two departments. One is the development of Kotlin and Vue.js, React.js, uh, like full stack applications, custom development. And um, the other part is the cloud ops. And uh, Chan and me are currently in the cloud ops department. And um, yeah, so uh, IT has grew a lot. So we have already over 85 people uh, working for our projects. And yeah, we also became the best employer in Germany. And also we are part of the Cloud Native Foundation. Uh, we are there the member, Silver member. We have also different partnerships, with Elastic, Kubernetes and Hashicorp and all the stuff. So yeah, that's regarding our company, IITS. And based on that, we want to uh, show you the open source stuff, uh, which we developed for you guys, and especially the Terraform OTC st stuff. So the agenda will be as following. Today, we'll make a short introduction to Terraform. Then we switch over to the Open Telecom Cloud Project Factory. Like what's the purpose? What's the structure? Why we do that? Uh, what kind of vision do we have? And in the second part, we will have also demo. Uh, so Chan will then uh, show us how to do it and like live. So he uh, will do the stuff uh, the live and demonstrate you how easy it is to use. And also later we will present you some other related projects on the OTC, which are open source and which most probably will, you will need for your projects. So uh, stay tuned. Shortly, uh, what is Terraform for you guys, which never heard about Terraform? Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code a software tool that provides a consistent CLI workflow to manage hundreds of cloud services. So long story short, so you don't do stuff anymore over the UI, so you would not do it over the OTC UI, but you put everything in code. This has a lot of benefits because, for example, if uh, your cloud ops uh, employee leaves the company, all the wisdom uh, will leave with him. And so nobody can reproduce what you did on the UI. But the code is the only source of truth in Terraform. So basically, it, he doesn't need to write so much documentation when he's leaving the company. Why I'm telling that? Because I have often the situation that cu customer coming say, hey, my only guy left, what should I do now? And with Terraform, you can avoid this problem. And for sure, you can have also easy understanding about your infrastructure, what's really happening there. Uh, you can set up pipelines and permission and everything like that way much easier than over the UI. That's why we are huge fans of Terraform and using this already long, uh, many, many years and have also a lot of certified developers for Terraform. So yeah, uh, OTC has also a Terraform provider. So it means you can use Terraform also for OTC. And uh, this is like a screenshot from the uh, OTC um, uh, provider, cloud provider. And you see there's also a lot of Terraform resources which OTC provides. So if, we, if we search this one for Google, so if you go, for example, for Terraform registry, 
and then you tap here open Genicom cloud and you see this here the provider so you can just use this one but you see there's a lot of services and it can become very complicated for people who really start new and fresh on the OTC. So where do you start? How do you make my Terraform architecture? How do I bundle the modules? What are modules and all the stuff? How do I log in into the uh, OTC itself over Terraform? And all those questions come up, which it makes a little bit harder to start with uh, the Open Telecom Cloud based on Terraform. So um, that's why we said we want to make uh, you guys a little bit of life easier and we'll share knowledge then with you. So that's why we created the project factory, the OTC project factory. But first we need to question ourselves, what do we need for our infrastructure and what could be highly beneficial for you? That's so we asked ourselves, what do we need for our normal infrastructure? If you go to the OTC, what kind of elements you need from the OTC? And so I was also talking with uh, a public speaker and uh, was asking him because uh, sometimes I have clients uh, who talk with me about uh, Terraform and like best practices on the cloud and uh, like common stuff. And I say like, yep, cloud infrastructure looks very, very similar in most of the cases. And then some people say, no, no, my infrastructure is completely unique. Uh, that's why I cannot follow best practices and why I need a very custom solution for that with custom things. And so I was talking with this public speaker also, and he was also, no, no, this is bullshit in 99 percentage of the cases, because uh, mostly of the cases we're doing every time the same things, a little bit different parameters, but like the, the packages which we deliver are very, very similar each, each time. So why not make these packages public available to everybody? Yeah? And also in the dozens of architecture, which I already discussed with the clients, every time we came to the point where we said, okay, the, the most of the stuff is every time very like the other things which we develop or like other projects and customers also doing. So it's not unique. So what kind of things do we usually need? So if you go to the OTC, most pri uh, probably we need a virtual private cloud and a subnet or multiple subnets. Maybe we need a Kubernetes cluster or we need virtual machines, it's like 99% is the case. Most probably we also want to expose our containers or virtual machines. So we need the load balancer. We need private DNS. We don't want to work on IP addresses. We want to have DNS naming. So we need a private DNS. We need also to expose it over DNS publicly. So we need public DNS. We need secret storage and injection. And you see like these are like the global topic which you use every time. When we dive, uh, dive a little bit deeper. So basically if you want to have a Kubernetes, for example, or CC it's called in OTC, then uh, we need to take a look what are the elements inside the Kubernetes, what we need. We need KMS for the encryption of the volumes. We need Elastic Cloud Server, so multiple ones. We need node pools. We need auto scaling. We need also the uh, kubectl config to access the cluster. Maybe if you don't have a high security environment, we also want to access uh, the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, that's why we need also public Elastic IP. We need also some add-ons, for example, metric add-ons to get the matrix of Kubernetes and all the stuff. So you see, like I talked already a lot and for a Kubernetes cluster, you need a lot of resources. So I think it should be as easy as playing with bricks. If you take a look again about all these elements and if you will match this one to uh, Terraform itself, I'll go back some slides, you will see we need to search through all this tree and like maybe to, to get from there something, from there something, from there something. It takes a lot of time to develop a proper module. And that's why we say, okay, we will take this work for you. And just the part which we did for our clients, we will make it open source for you available. And that's why we say, and my approach also cloud is really playing with bricks. So I would take my CCE module, I take my VPC module, and then I'm building my uh, cloud together as I wish. And then it may be Argo CD, some containers also. And yeah, that's why we developed such uh, modules, which should make your life very much easier. How does a module look like? or some kind of Lego brick, as I will call them. So this is a usage example. For example, this is the CCE. 
all these elements which I said, like public IP, kubectl config, auto scaling, add-ons, and all the stuff, is all gathered in one single module, and together with the best practices. So uh, there's also default parameter settings, which are very very common, and which you can you just use so if you just look here it's very easy understanding so you have auto scaling uh, config with eight nodes we have uh, in the cluster config settings we have their uh, one subnet we have the uh, cc cluster version in this example 119 currently uh, we use 121 high availability is uh, shut off uh, with false a simple flag auto scaling is uh, true so it automatically scales based on the load and we distribute the, the nodes through to availability zones and we use the storage type SSD. So it's really super easy to use. So uh, let's take a look uh, about the project factory. I want to show it to you then. Where do we find this project factory? It's very, very easy. So you just type in Google Terraform registry, click on the first link, then you get to the public Terraform registry. And then you just type in here OTC Basically, you need to just type in OTC <laughs> and you see the first modules there uh, on the bottom uh, is already our project factory. And if you click on that, you will get forwarded. And uh, this is our project factory. Uh, you can see also uh, we have quite some usage. You see here there's already 5,800 uh, downloads and you see that this year it's more growing than last year also. Uh, it becomes more and more popular also. Uh, so uh, here's like a very short description, the usage, for example, here the VPC, how to use it. You have here different available modules, for example, ACME for Let's Encrypt certificates uh, over uh, OTC DNS, Kubernetes cluster, cloud tracing service, a jump post, which is very, very common and more secure environments that you want to have a jump post module, a load balancer, OPS, and like databases also, if you want to create a Postgres, MySQL, or whatever, very, very easily. Uh, also with security rules and stuff like that. So uh, you can choose whatever you want. WAF, also Keyclock single sign on, uh, which is also very, very popular in the OTC uh, clients. You can just choose this module and use them. If you would take a look, I'll focus now a little bit on Kubernetes and CCE. If you take a look at the CCE, uh, and I just clicked on the link, so you can see here again, this is the uh, some usage example. And there's also a description how uh, you can test the auto scaling uh, with some very good screenshots and very good description how you can work with this one. Um, and this one counts for every module which you uh, want to have. So if, for example, you want to have jump posts, there's also full description about everything. Um, yeah, still we have now these modules and, and these are like, uh, proper modules and good combined. But the question still is, how do I start on the OTC? That's for sure. We have YouTube videos and we have like on the community, we had some one hour talk about how to set it up. But here's also OTC Terraform template, which you can use. And this is a blueprint. It comes from a workshop, which we did for the client. And basically we adjusted it a little bit. And this is a blueprint where you can really easily start to do, develop some things on the OTC. And it's really a step-by-step -step, uh, guide, which you can uh, then follow. And then afterwards you will have a lot of resources online. And uh, this one is together with Argo City. Um, but Argo CD, uh, maybe if you don't need it, you just need to skip the Kubernetes part and that's it. And uh, Chan will later uh, in this talk work to you, with you through this workshop once and you will do it live. So we have also some, some common concepts, also the description. We have some screenshot about the basic architecture, which we would recommend for 90% uh, of the customers. Uh, some other uh, guidelines, how to set up a secure and remote Terraform state. And also later, if you want to use, for example, Argo City, how to go from Terraform and infrastructure then to your container environment. There we have also some blueprint for you. So uh, here's everything. Everything is uh, open source hosted on GitHub. Uh, so basically, if you have some issue or you're missing some modules or some features, you can just open here issue and then we'll answer and help you out. Uh, also, and then you say like, okay, but uh, 
uh, how do I know this is like proper code and it's tested? So we didn't merge it yet, but we have also uh, implemented Terra test. Terra test is for automated testing. So basically every time when we commit and push, uh, we spin up a dummy environment and apply all these modules then there. So you can see here's four different folders, CCE, network, ADS, and WAF. And uh, here is then in the main TF, uh, all these modules are used and they are applied directly like this. And we test them on every push that the code, which is here, is still working. So uh, you can also yeah, be sure that, that these models are working then. But if something is not working for you, just create an issue and then we will help you out. So this was the project factory itself. It has a lot of cool modules which you can use. And what are the benefits of the OTC project factory? It's open source. Other companies are also contributing because we started first with IITS uh, consulting company with uh, a lot of uh, CloudOps people. We like put our code there together. But uh, at some point, other companies like uh, not IITS, but other companies also joined us and also created pull requests. And um, so, uh, yeah they are also contributing. So we are uh, becoming some kind of uh, OTC Terraform community, which is really cool because we then together um, develop new modules, uh, best practices and uh, yeah, making ourselves and also other clients life easier. Um, yeah, and also the benefit is you don't need to reinvent the wheel. So you don't need to look up this all these resources. You can just take all the code which you need. So if you even don't want to use our module, just take the code what you need to have for your project and just copy paste them because the code's completely available, it's open source. So just use whatever you would like to have. And also one thing is you don't run into the problems you could avoid because there's also a lot in the documentation. It's also a lot of remarks and, and hints and saying like, don't do it like this because then you will have later on with this and this, we will have a problem and stuff like that. So, um, and also it's structured to the best practices so you can save a lot of time. Yeah. And yeah, sure, uh, best practice and architecture guidelines because we're talking a lot of clients uh, and also uh, with other um, architects. And so we just gather all the information together. So um, that was from my part, from the Terry part. So uh, I will give over now to uh, Jan, who will show you the live demonstration. Uh, thank you, Victor. So uh, first of all, I would like to point out that I really like the automated coffee machine analogy for what we are actually trying to do here. Normally, <clears throat> to get a coffee, you need to get the beans and then grind it and then uh, press it down and then pour the water. but Nowadays, we have automated, cut, automated coffee machines. You just press a button and it gives you the coffee. And yes, uh, sometimes you lose some flexibility if you are really a coffee connoisseur. But like Victor said, 99% of the time, that's not going to be it, right? And because of this, uh, we wanted to set the parameters as much as we can, but at the same time, give the user the flexibility to override them as much as we can at the same time. Uh, so, as Victor said, I will make the a simple uh, demonstration today with uh, the project factory and our OTC Terraform template. So, uh, as Victor was showing a moment ago, and yeah, there is a small change here. I changed the project factory's uh, project name, but apart from that, everything is the exact same as in the in the actual repository. And uh, normally, you need to set uh, certain things like your Docker Hub username, your Git token uh, for Argo CD. But as uh, we discussed today, we will not be dealing with Argo CD. As such, I will just uh, remove this section completely. And uh, the important part is here. Uh, obviously, you uh, need to authenticate with your OTC tenant to actually provision resources or make changes on your resources. And for this, we use the AKSK authentication using the programmatic access uh, endpoint on OTC. So in order to do this, uh, you can just go to OTC IAM. I can even show that. So in IAM, normally uh, to start with working with this, this is also described in the documentation, of course, you normally create a new user. And after giving it a username, you choose the programmatic access, which will give you the uh, AKSK, right? 
And in our case, I already created this user um, and yeah, I already set them uh, in my environment, the, the values. Uh, so in this case, I will simply uh, do the following. I call this OPC playground uh, domain name, access key, and secret key. And since these are all from environment, I'll just do this. So yeah, obviously for security reasons, do not share these values with anyone. This is essentially sharing uh, the, the root credentials of your environment. So do not share the, these values. The second point regarding Terraform is that it will require state. I will explain this in a bit more detail uh, as soon as we start applying and I will uh, give you a rundown of what Terraform needs and what actually is going on. But since it takes roughly 10, 12 minutes to actually apply uh, our infrastructure, I will do this during the execution. So let's start. I will go ahead and first source my environments. And then I will go to remote state bucket creation. Terraform init will be required so that it will download the necessary provider, executables, binaries, and also the uh, modules uh, that you will be using. And this is, by the way, a really simple code. If you want to take a look, it's creating only three resources, uh, a bucket, a KMS resource to encrypt the bucket, and a random ID so that you do not get uh, resource clashes, especially on the KMS side. So I'll go ahead and apply this. And we will be able to see this here. And as you can as you can see, EUD showcase uh, state secrets uh, will be created in a moment as soon as I apply it. So KMS key is created, bucket is created, and if I refresh here, you will see our new bucket. And the KMS key is already bound to this, and this, it will automatically encrypt any anything that you will push here. I will, as I said, explain what is pushed here and what is stored in there. And another nice thing is that this is the so-called state backend configuration. It also outputs you this, so you can easily, you don't need to configure all of this yourself. You can just copy this, and you can put this in your settings section. And yeah, you're basically ready to... Uh, use a fully secure remote state uh, Terraform code at this point. So I will switch to my showcase uh, section and run Terraform in it, which will download uh, the modules that we will be using. Uh, as, a, as I said, this is a simplified example. We will be creating a VPC. Uh, we will not be creating an SNAT as this is not required for EUDE since there is a built-in shared SNAT system. Uh, we will be creating a Kubernetes cluster with full auto-scaling support across multiple availability zones and like full auto-scaling node pools. And yeah, we will automatically write all of the parameters like the kube control config or your ELB ID, et cetera, all of them into a bucket as a secret, secret access method. And lastly, uh, we will also create a load balancer which will later be used uh, with the ingress if you would actually be creating resources inside your Kubernetes cluster. We'll go ahead and apply this. Uh, this is a simplified example with only 16 resources. And um, this is only showing some well, what is, what is the bare minimum for uh, required to create a Kubernetes cluster with auto-scaling uh, on OTC? But um, you can always extend this example to your needs. You can add an RDS, like Victor said, to create a, a, a database. You can add ACME uh, module to actually generate wildcard certificates via DNS challenge. And if you actually have a suggestion that you do not see uh, as a module in our project factory, please, uh, you either make a pull request or just make an issue and we will we will get to that as soon as possible now regarding the state uh, terraform is a stateful system where uh, it's in order to track which resources it creates or this or, or manages it will create a so-called state file which generally looks like this and this is a so-called um, 
what is the so-called local state where it's a JSON file that's directly saved in a local local file local file system. This of course is not useful, especially if you have multiple developers working on the same infrastructure. In order to facilitate multiple people accessing the same infrastructure and making changes, uh, we are using a so-called remote state. And in its most simple form, a remote state is basically saving this JSON file, not here, but instead directly inside the cloud by using a bucket. The key problem is that state in general can contain sex sensitive data. Now, if you're creating, for example, a database, you will be generating a random password. And when you generate that random password, it will be stored in the state. And you do not want, because of this, you do not want your state to be to be accessible for everyone. And that's exactly why we also need uh, KMS encryption so that uh, in order to access this, one has to have full admin rights on the infrastructure. So it will only allow you to read the database uh, password if uh, you can actually reset the database password in terms of role management. And uh, at this point, we should be slowly starting to see uh, some of the resources we have created in our project. And as you can see from my setan.sh uh, here, we will be creating in project EUDE showcase, and we will be provisioning our resources uh, in this project. So I will switch over to that. And here we can start seeing, we already created a virtual private cloud and we already have a subnet in here. And in our subnets, we already have our load balancer with its external IP already bound to it. And right now we are creating, we are at the process of creating our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, this takes around five to six minutes. And once it is done, we will be able to uh, use that. Another important thing I uh, should mention about Terraform is that there is full resource parallelization. You will see this clearly as soon as we start creating the node pools. As we have multiple availability zones, these node pools will be split into two different uh, availability zones on OTC. And because of this, they will be actually different node pools, both with auto scaling, of course. And during this time, it will actually create both of these pools at the same time. Because Terraform, if there is no direct dependency between resource A and B, then it will parallelize as much as it can. What this also means is that another resource, for example, if you're creating two clusters or another RDS instance, which also takes some time, it could be done in parallel. So you're actually, the bigger your infrastructure is, the more time you will save. Regarding the configurability, this uh, setup section is designed to add the uh, data unique to each user. And for example, your access keys, your Docker Hub usernames, uh, all that stuff. Whereas this is more about your infrastructure configuration instead of like the authentication part. So you can here select how many nodes you want, how many maximum nodes, what kind of nodes you want in terms of flavor. And this will be passed through uh, the, the variables into the CC module here. Another thing is even though this is a simplified example, uh, what I should point out is that this supports more complicated infrastructures as well. When I said automated coffee machine, it's not just the kind of coffee machine that will give you only one kind of coffee. So if I would need multiple subnets here, I can always specify more and this will be my subnet name and this will be my subnet's uh, IP range. And that's basically it. I can create as many subnets as I want and they will be automatically applied. So when we create these modules, and said that we stick to best practices, uh, it's still quite flexible. In fact, uh, even though uh, we said that 99% of the cases will be Kubernetes cluster or VMs, we actually do support even bare metal Kubernetes clusters in our project factory. So we try to also make it as flexible as possible while as easy to use as possible. And here we go, we have created our cluster. Now we just started our node pool creation. And as you can see, they are being created at the same time. And we can take a look here. Let's go ahead and refresh. And yes, our showcase uh, cluster is already ready. And right now we are creating our node pools as it can be seen here. Here's an interesting part. If I am correct, we should already be able to get our kube control secrets. 
Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Source set minus NSH. And there's also a nice shell helper function. This is particularly designed to get data from the bucket, as I just mentioned. We are clear, we are saving all of the access data and secrets that should be easily accessible, but should also be secure in a separate bucket. And these functions are designed to uh, use basic Linux commands like curl to automatically get the data from there. A good example is uh, get kube control config. So I'll go ahead and source this one as well. Now I can call the function get kube control config and it will automatically replace my kube control config. Now I can go ahead and take a look at the status. As you can see, the cluster is up, but all pods are still on pending status. This is because we do not have compute resources yet. In fact, if I type kube control get nodes, it will show no nodes at the moment. That's because we are currently creating them. Once the nodes are up, we should start seeing that our pods will get provisioned into the compute resources we just created, and we should also see our nodes here. And I already see more CSI drivers coming in and also container creation. So now we should have the nodes, yep. As you can see, uh, it's the what it's installing, by the way, by default is core DNS. Uh, if you're familiar with kube control, core DNS is for uh, in-cluster DNS resolution. Same with the Everest, CSI, and its controllers and drivers. These are just for storage. And as you can see, since we enabled auto-scaling, uh, it requires both the node pools to be configured for auto-scaling and the actual auto-scaler add-on to be installed. So we are basically handling all of this stuff in the back automatically in Project Factory. That's, that's the main goal, right? So if you enable auto-scaling, what you normally do need to do is you need to create pools with auto-scaling enabled and also auto-scaling uh, add-on to be installed. But why not do it in the same package, right? And also the metric server, as Victor mentioned. But right now, yeah, we have a fully online Kubernetes cluster that we have just created, which took us roughly 12 minutes. Nice. The short summary what Chan did. So uh, you need to make some preparation for this workshop which Chan showed. It's also publicly source available. So uh, you need to set this environment variables. Please uh, don't screen share them or like make them some kind of public because they're uh, secrets. You need to create the remote Terraform uh, state bucket, which also Chan showed you. And then we applied this kind of modules we applied there. For sure, you can take also other modules which you want to have, but this would be a very, very, very common thing with a lot of customer need, especially like the CCE, a lot of customers struggling it in the first time to set it up properly in the first try. So we choose this kind of uh, demonstration for today. What should we manage with Terraform? So I want to talk now a little bit about some the surrounding ecosystem a little bit uh, around the project factory. So we for sure manage the Open Telecom Cloud with Terraform, but also we manage, for example, Keycloak. It's a very popular identity management system. And uh, we also control GitLab with Terraform. And I would also adv advise you to split, for example, the Keycloak configuration into a different Terraform remote TF state. And so it should be separate from the Open Telecom Cloud. And also, I'm not a big fan about, about doing everything with Terraform. There's also some clients who put like every, uh, so like they put like everything in one Terraform uh, remote state. They had their Helm, Kubernetes, uh, the OTC and all the stuff together. And it brings a little bit problem because you're not somehow split it. And what we every time do, what we like is to like build the infrastructure inside OTC, then bootstrap over Terraform and Helm, then Argo CD or Flux. And afterwards, all the Kubernetes and the Helm stuff takes then Argo CD or Flux, like the GitOps approach, which we today will not talk about because we will focus today on the Terraform part. But there's also a lot of community videos and other videos from us regarding this topic. Some lessons learned, which we had uh, for the Terraform part, used uh, remote states for sure, not locally state, to uh, work together with other people. Uh, pay attention to modules. So basically, look when you can group some things together logically, put them in an own module so that you maybe can also reuse them. The main TF 
should be your guideline through the cloud setup. You saw it uh, in Chan screen share. So there was the main TF and there was just modules and it was very e easy to understand uh, how the uh, how the setup is. So you go just top down, read it once and you know exactly what's happening with the code. So it's really cool and it's far better. In my opinion, it's far better to understand than even UI. And UI can never be as good as this code, in my opinion. So um, if you use also the modules across multiple projects, uh, I would highly recommend them to put in some kind of registry like we did. You can also make a private registry if you wish to. And also I can not stress it enough. KISS is very, very important for Terraform. So Terraform and also it doesn't matter for every code uh, which you have for YAML, it's very important to keep it simple and stupid. And so f for me, it's like one of the most important things from clean code. And so please keep your things very uh, stupid. So uh, yeah. Uh, if you need also uh, to bootstrap a lot of similar infrastructures, put a, a abstraction layer on top. That means if you have, for example, uh, 30 clients, uh, you have one client, but he has like 30 departments and they have like four stages and the departments are switching uh, every time or like more coming in and stuff like that. It makes sense to put abstraction layer on top, but this is more like for a very big corporation. Um, yeah, the project factory uh, works currently for EU and L and EU DE. Some of the modules are currently not yet working for EU and L, but that's based on the OTC Terraform provider. Uh, but there's also validation. So basically, if you want to apply this module, um, then uh, you get a validation error and say it's like, okay, this is currently not yet available uh, in EU and L. Yeah, but mostly of the stuff is tested already and with Terraform, uh, Terra test for EU and L and also for EUD, so you can use them. And also uh, EU CH uh, will also come. Yeah, that's the thing for now. Uh, why did we call the project factory? Because um, it came from the idea that we create some kind of pro uh, some kind of factory for uh, new Terraform uh, projects. So basically we create a factory which makes it very easy to um, creating new pro Terraform projects. It's also very common naming in the Terraform world. A little bit around the ecosystem. So you have like Terraform, you have your databases, you have Kubernetes cluster. And I wanted to show you a little bit of more open source stuff which we have, which are also um, in kind of this ecosystem there. So when you're having now your Kubernetes cluster up and running, then you uh, try, you go maybe over SNAT, so shared NAT, then you get some image pullback of error. So, and then you're wondering what kind, what is this? So this is a one and a half years ago, uh, the Docker Hub rate limit was uh, introduced for Docker Hub. So that means anonymous users, which don't have a Docker Hub account, the rate limit is set to 100 pulls per six hours per IP address. And you need to set every, and every your Kubernetes deployment, you need to set your image pool secrets. So that's why we start to make your life a little bit easier. And what we did, we used this service uh, from Alexis to auto inject Docker Hub secrets into every of your deployment. What you need to do is you go just to Docker.io uh, and get your credentials like username, password. You need to set it inside this command here, my password. And somewhere here is the username, exactly this one you need to set. You need to execute it in the CLI. Then you get such a config. This part is the interesting one, the Docker config JSON. So you copy this part, then executing these two lines for adding our Helm chart, and then you execute Helm install and use then here this Docker config JSON as the default cluster pool secret Docker config JSON 64 encode. So this part is matching with this part. And when you're executing that, you have no problems at all anymore about uh, Docker rate limits. Uh, you can also use it for SVR and also other Docker registries, not only for uh, Docker Hub. So, yeah. So, what do we have else? Uh, for example, if you use our Terraform Project Factory RDS module and to spin up a MySQL or Postgres or whatever you wish to, then you're coming to this point and you say, okay, this is nice, but I have a microservice environment and I want to have everything as infrastructure as code. So how, when I'm creating a new database, how do I create new users, tables, permissions, and all the stuff? 
And we provide you some very cool way also, also based on Kubernetes, not working on VMs, but only on Kubernetes. It's here also publicly available. It's a Terraform module also. So it's called uh, DB init. And basically what you can do is to provide such a SQL file and there you can create as many databases as you want, create also as many users as you want. And also for your database specific language, you can use uh, the SQL commands then. And you have also some replacement here. So the secret injection also works here. So uh, you can set here some secrets there and will be automatically injected here inside. Uh, this is pretty cool. We use it also a lot. This is very, very convenient features uh, feature. Here again, are all the links for the open source. Here's also the OTC Terraform template, which Chan showed you the code because you just checked it out. And OTC Project Factory is used in a lot of projects and it's also used in like projects which have hundreds of containers per each stage and it works reliable. And yeah, I hope maybe you will either contribute it or like use it, maybe get a, give us a GitHub start. It would be very appreciated. And that's from our part. Are there any questions? We have one question from David. In AWS, I usually create a user or better role with granular access to specific resources and give it access key to the program as environment variable. Is it possible on OTC? I can answer that. Uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, however, um, you need to be sure that all resources you want to create uh, with Terraform in this case will be creatable by your permissions. And certain modules, for example, require root level access. Um, Acme module, for example, will create a DNS manager user. And for user creation, new user creation, it will require root level access. But granular control is definitely possible. Yeah, it's on the notes. This module requires IAM permissions on OTC provider. So there's, and also there was a question about context. Here's also description what we meant with that. So basically in context, the variable and stage, this is like to group them some kind of logically. So if you have multiple departments, which are working maybe on the same project, then you can differentiate it between context or one team creates like multiple stages and has like two st uh, stages. For example, one is for website, one is for payment service and they have a huge setup. Uh, context is like a very cool uh, thing to somehow uh, differentiate. Also important to note is that uh, certain resources on OTC, which is also the same on AWS, I think, is they require uh, globally unique names like buckets since they will generate URLs for access. Uh, they need to be globally unique which also allows you to use this context to uh, make sure it, it is globally unique and not clashing with someone else's bucket. Cool. Otherwise, uh, I will say thank you and I will give over to Uli. Thank you, uh, Victor. Thank you, Chan, for sharing your experience here with us, with the community. It's again a great show and I cross my fingers that we can continue to improve and develop more on the open source uh, project factory to bring more modules there. You know my wish list, it's endless. <laughs> yeah. so, well, maybe that's all for from my side for today. And Stefan. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Chan, and also thank you, Uli, for the nice webinar presentation here. I already have read some positive feedback in the chat. So when you have any feedback, positive, negative, or neutral, you can put it into the chat. Then I can also build this in into future webinars. I would thank you for joining today's webinar and then see you again in the next month, as usually last Friday of the month, 10 a.m., same time, same date. Thank you a lot for joining and uh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you.